So uh, welcome to Famous When I'm Dead, where we talk to artists about how they thrive while they're still alive. <laughs> and my guest today is Luis Rojas. Is that, am I? Rojas. Rojas. Okay, cool. From Lima, Peru, yeah? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't know much about Lima, Peru. I actually looked it up before I called you. And uh, you guys have the first university in the Americas, right? Like it was started in like 1551. Yeah, exactly. The name is San Marcos University. San Marcos. Yeah. And you have a city of nine million people. Uh, actually, we right now we are almost 10 million. Wow. No, it's a lot of the population here. Yeah. I mean, when I think of Peru, I think of like mountains and nature and country. I don't think of cities, but that's a big city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we are like a, a, a huge country, you know, with a lot of different areas. You know, we have like the coast and you can find like kind of modern cities, you know. Uh -huh. And you have the the mountains. Also, you have a jungle. Oh, you 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 can find also like modern cities there. You wow. Know? But yeah, 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 with variation, you know, with each place, each place has own characteristics. You know. Huh. So, um, what about uh, how you got started with art? I mean, you're you're born in Peru. That's like your the place you've lived your whole life, right? Yeah. And so what got you started or was there a, a, a moment or a story that you can tell us about how you, like when you knew you were going to be an artist? Well, uh, I knew to draw, you know. I, I, I knew how to pain in a ba basic level, you know, but when I was like teenager, I didn't want to be an artist. I wanted to be an architect. Oh, you know? okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I was looking for, for a job, you know, to do in my summers, you know, in my holiday. Mm -hmm. And this guy, you know, asked me if I wanted to paint. I thought uh, I I will be painting walls, you know, like a yeah. house, like like a factory or something like that. I yeah. said, okay, I can do it, you know, because there's some money that you can get, you know, uh, and you don't waste time, you know. So I said yes. When I met him, you know, he put in front of in front of me, you know, like a, a canvas. And he told me, okay, this is going, this is what are you going to do? You know, you are going to paint, like with oil painting. I said, what? Yeah, you are going to do it. Where did you meet this guy? He was uh, actually an, an artist, a uh, Peruvian artist, that he was like uh, recreating and painting like a religious theme, uh -huh. you know, religious yeah. so, so he was doing restoration? He was doing. I was wow. helping him. You know? And I started like when I was 17 years old. Okay. Yeah. When I sit, when I sat, you know, in front of that canvas, I make my decision in my life. I want to be an artist. In that really? moment, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's an interesting moment. Like, how did he find you? 
I don't know. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Did he just knock on your door? Me is, uh, no. <laughs> for me, it's uh, like, like, like I told you a moment ago, you know, um, all my life, I knew that I could draw. I uh-huh. caught pain, you know, but I didn't know how to get it. I didn't know how to grow up with. Um, I probably, you know, I just needed that that moment in my life to make a decision, you know. Yeah. And that moment was in front of me. I said, okay, I, I'll take it. No, I want it. I want it. I really want this, you know. And you were and seven, all my- 17 when that happened? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was really young. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so did- I started oil painter. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, I started like oil painter. You know, I had the opportunity to be in front of a lot of books, a lot of style, a lot of artists from different centuries. You know, and for me, it was like a blowing my mind in every place I was looking, you know. So I, I had a strong influence to, to get like uh, the right technique, how to paint, how to mix the color, you know, um, how to understand what is light, what is texture, you know. Um, and, you know, after years, I get the having, you know, the easy way of seeing expressions. You know, one thing is that you see the expression. Another thing is how you put that expression that you see on your paper, on your on your canvas, you know, and what you are going to create after that. That is a long process, of course. So are a lot of these influences from religious imagery or where are you getting all of this? Like you're, you're starting off oil painting and this guy is teaching you oil painting. And yeah. he's doing restorations on churches and religious uh, religious stuff. Um, is he doing any frescoes, or is it all just restoring oil oil paintings? Yeah, uh, he was uh, restoring. Also, he was like painting new one, but they were like reproductions, you know, like copies uh-huh. from. Oh, uh, I see. All ancient painter, you know. For instance, I was uh, copying Surbaran, the he's a Spanish painter. Okay. You know, I was like copying and also learning from Rubens. Oh, you know. nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Velázquez, you know. Uh-huh. Uh, there's a French painter uh, named uh, uh, Bouguereau. Bouguereau. Okay. Yeah. Um, also learning from the Holland influence, you know, the Renaissance uh, painting, you know, learning from like really old painters, you know, like Miguel Angel from the Capilla Sixtina or Sixty Chapter, you know, uh-huh. uh, uh, Rafael Sancio. Actually, that was my my first painter that I learned from, because when I was in front of that canvas, the painting that I I I needed to paint, you know, I needed to do was the uh, La Virgen del Lago is the name of this painting, you know, the Lake Virgin, I guess, is the the, the, the translation. Mm. It's a famous painting. So I, I you know I learned from that, from those experience, you know. Uh, it's interesting because when you are painting. You know, uh, you know, uh, 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 this kind of uh, subject, you are like learning what to do with the face, what to do with a cloud, you know, a clothing, you are painting movement, you are painting light, you are painting shadow. You know? uh, a lot of texture because also I did a lot of uh, still life. Mm-hmm. Uh, my influence, like for me to learn how to create like the right volume was like e- Edgar Ladell. He's a British painter from the 18th century, you know, the Victorian age. Mm-hmm. So I, 
I had a lot of big influence, you know. Um, all, How did you I choose think, between all of that? Because when I see the vast amount of paintings, they kind of start to blend together. Was there something that, that stood out to you or was it just maybe the first painting that was put in front of you where you actually chose the artist and you're like, I want to learn form from this guy and I want to learn light from this person? No, no, no. I, the person that was teaching me, he was like managing, you know, my process of learning. Uh, he was my actual teacher, you know. Yeah, you were his uh, apprentice. I, yeah, yeah, exactly. I was his apprentice. Yeah. And did your did your parents introduce you to him, or or how did you find him? For uh, relative friends that told me, hey, one friend wants someone to help. To that that person needs a help. Okay, yeah. I said yes, I can do. It. Okay. That was a really coincidence. Cool. Was, it wasn't like a, a real, you know. Uh, idea or a real meet, you know, it wasn't like that. It was a coincidence. Okay. Okay. Cool. Uh, so um, you're learning from this guy, and he t takes you. He teaches you for how long? Uh, six months. That's it. Six months. Yeah. I had this image. <laughs> I had this image in my mind that it was like this four-year thing that you studied with this guy. I don't know. After that, I started working. I started working in a gallery. You know, I was painting for this owner of this gallery. He was asking me, you know, commissions. And I was in that in that part of my life. I needed to start creating things because before I was copying things. Uh huh. You know? I see. Totally different process. Yeah. So. That situation like forced me to improve myself, you know. Yeah. But after two years, I started working uh, with a uh, 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 with two persons that they own the, uh, their gallery, and they they were teaching me. Too, you know? Okay. And it's five years. Yeah. And that was your main thing for five years then. Yeah, exactly. So oh. it's like when I was. Uh, 27 I had like almost nine years of experience oh wow so yeah. what kind of things were you doing for them like were you doing portrait commissions or uh, no 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 I was doing like uh, nudes uh -huh. I was doing portraits perfect, like, perfect for a 20 year old boy right <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> I was doing like a portrait, classic portrait, mm -hmm. you know. I was doing also mythologic, a lot of mythologic things, you know, like that is the perfect mix between like muscles and uh, uh, beauty, you know. Uh -huh. So the things were really nice, you know, and that is a lot of learn, a lot of learning because you start managing the light in a different way, you know. It's like more magic. Um, it's just really interesting. It's really, really nice. Yeah, I mean, I can, I can see that in your work when I was looking at it. I was actually talking to Chance about it beforehand, and we were talking about how much we like the lighting. So, yeah, and, and it's interesting looking at your work because there's that classical training is so important. Um, because you're able to do basically whatever you want with the figure or the face as long as you have those fundamentals. So that yeah. it, really, it really shines through in your work for sure. Yeah, yeah, it's really important. I, I had the experience a few years ago of teaching. Um, all the time I mention, you know, people that they want to learn or friends or even the students. You know that it's really important to have a, a strong fundament. Mm -hmm. You know, for you learning, they should learn contrast, perspective, drawing. You know, uh, coloring, values, uh, how to understand light, uh, backlights. 
this is so important, you know, saturation, desaturation, you know. Um, after that, for me, the, the process of creating is natural. It came natural, mm -hmm. you know, because it's like you have all these tools and finally you know how to do it. You know mm -hmm. what to do, then, you know. Yeah. And then at that point, it becomes really joyful, right? I mean, you can get into the kind of uh, state of flow and you can yeah, just exactly. paint and use the, the things that you're, the tools at your disposal. Yeah. Like, for example, how, how long would you say about do you take on these caricatures that you've been doing lately? Okay, if I say it, you know, people, people sometimes they don't believe me. But I can spend two hours. Two hours? Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's kind of fast, you know. That's pretty fast, yeah. 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 Do you just do it all at once? You just rock right through it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can do a few sketches, you know, with uh, simple lines. And after that, I can start creating the volume. For me, painting is like a sculpting, you know, because it's not like uh, since my drawing or from my drawing, I get all details. No, no, for me, painting is something that you are like growing up during the process, you know. Huh. It's because, for instance, if I, uh, okay, when I, I want to get one expression, you know, I understand muscles, but to understand muscles, I need to understand light, you know? And if I understand light, muscles, I understand also volume. Mm -hmm. And that is so important for me to create the likeness. Mm -hmm. The line, the simple line, doesn't give me the likeness. For me, the likeness gives me, you know, the likeness is from my volume, from my mm. painting. So you're saying like when you do the line drawings, you're not really feeling the likeness so much until you start to build the volume and... Exactly. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Um, so I'm interested in like what happened in that time and like kind of how you transitioned into being a concept artist. Okay, that is really, really good question because, um, uh, oh, okay, how, how should I start? Um, I needed in 2008, you know, to reinvent myself, you know, Mm -hmm. Because, you know, uh, for all the world, we have like an economic crisis. Mm -hmm. you know? And that was a strong hit in my, in, my, in my area of working. You know, suddenly I didn't have like commission. I lost all my commission. Mm. Um, I didn't know what to do. So I had a few friends and I asked them, if I can work with them, like drawing uh, things for kids, uh, books for kids, mm -hmm. like for publishing company. Mm -hmm. And that, in that situation, and that point of my life was really interesting because uh, I needed to work also with my ego because okay. I, I was like a oil painter, you know, yeah. like. You, you can recognize yourself like, okay, I am good. I am good painter. So I can do whatever I want when I am painting. But suddenly you are not. What thing that you do, what thing that you know, it doesn't work in this, in this time. Mm -hmm. okay.
Good view, sir. Shop. Nine years ago, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I probably I was in my area with people that I met. Uh, one of uh, a person that. Uh, I started using that because in that time, you know, people were painting with mouse. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. I, I <laughs> yeah, I couldn't do that. <laughs> yeah. So now you have a Cintiq, yeah? You have the, the good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Have well, you tried Cintiq, it? Uh, Cintiq I don't use, I don't like it. You know, I don't want to be mean with, with that, you know, tool. I don't like it because for me, it's like you have an obstacle, obstacle in front of your face, you know? and I don't like.
quite uh, different way, you know. Uh, I don't have problems when, you know, if I am not in front of my computer, I use the sketchbook, mm -hmm. you know, the lines, uh, and after that, I take the picture and done, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the next process or the next part is that I can open it in Photoshop and I can start adding color. But for me, it's, it's the same because I can do the sketch in Photoshop, you know, and I'll start adding colors, you know. I, the, another process that I have to create, you know, the, 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 the character is like also creating dots, creating, you know, a mass of painting and mm. after, you know, adding the details. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, what was there a moment, or was there an artist that you that you stumbled upon, or did you meet somebody? Like, what what happened where you saw caricature and you're like, I want to do that, and then you started doing that and kind of fell in love with it because it seems like you know you have the the training as a traditional oil painter, then you did concept art. And lately, you've been doing a lot of caricatures, uh, just judging by like your posts. So, yeah. was was there like a specific moment that happened, or an artist that you found that really turned you on to that? Um, well, uh, for me, uh, a caricature, you know, is is something that is connect with a portrait. Mm -hmm. You know, for also a caricature is more difficult than as a regular portrait yeah because you need to get the expression and it's amazing because how is possible that you can get the likeness but the caricature is not the person it hasn't you know it doesn't have the proportions yeah. you know the, the distance you know that is something that i really like you know, to create, because it's like you are creating another universe, universe, another person, but taking the soul of this person and yeah. putting your caricature. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, like I mentioned, you know, before I was doing a lot of portrait, a lot of portrait. But for me, it's something, for me, that experience was really nice, but at one point was like, okay, what else? What else should I do, you know, to keep growing, you know, to create, to keep learning? Because for learn, you need to fall. You know, when you fall, mm -hmm. you can, okay, I need to, to, to get more experience to learn from something else. Mm -hmm. I start looking, you know, I start looking around. I was like looking artists. Um, uh, for example, here in Peru, you have like a great caricatures. Um, Carlin is one of them, you know, Omar Ceballos, they are like really good caricatures, you know. After that, I was looking outside and I found Sebastian Kroger. Yeah. And I thought, okay, I really like what this guy is doing because it's the perfect, you know, mix between a modern vision of a portrait also with a traditional, you know, uh, support. Mm. Um, after, you know, I, I keep looking and I found Jota, Jota Dill. Jota Dill? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's great. Yeah. Um, Oleg Magnusson is American, I think, you know. Oleg um, Magnusson? Yeah. That doesn't sound like an American name. Um, Valentin Chibrit, yeah. I really like his work, you know, I mentioned it a, a moment ago. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, also you, you will find a lot of great caricatures from Spain, you know, they are like er really good. Do you know Ernesto Priego? Yeah, 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 he's yeah. from Brazil, he is really, really, really good, he's amazing. Yeah. yeah. His caricature like has a, a a lot of personality and it's unique the way how he is creating that caricature. You know, the way of creating his caricature is amazing. You said he's from Brazil. Yeah, I think so. 
Really? I thought he was Spanish. Uh, I don't know. I think so. He's from Brazil. Actually, um, Ernesto, I met him at um, Eurocature the first time. And he got first place for exaggeration, and I got second place. So the piece that he did, uh, actually, I can show you. Give me a second. Oh, probably you're right. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think he's from the same, right? Can you see? It's not very good on oh. the screen, but. Wow, yeah, I love it's it. It's good, right? Here, it's I'll amazing. A zoom in. Yeah, 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 I love it. Yeah, it's awesome. And uh, I just actually commissioned him uh, a while back to do a Freddie Mercury because my wife is like obsessed with Freddie Mercury. Oh. Yeah, he's great. And, and all ballpoint pen too. And I had the uh, pleasure to do live caricatures with him um, at an event when we were in Vienna at the uh, Eurocature convention. They brought us in for a, a gig. Um, so uh, that's actually the next question I have for you. Um, have you ever done live caricature? Uh, no. Uh, no? no, 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 no. Do I you don't. want to try? Yeah, I can. Yeah, I can. Yeah. Be because you got to do them in like three to five minutes, you know, <laughs> not two hours. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Yeah, that's. I guess that's probably why I'm not so surprised that you're able to do it in two hours because you know, um, that's that's kind of like one of the main things about live caricature is that you have to do it really quickly, um, and also you know you have. Once you master the tools and once you have that, you know, like you said, those tools at your disposal, you're able, you, you have a process that works. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is there, uh, were you just looking at other artists and taking things that you liked and, and putting that into your own technique? Or was there a specific person that you were looking at? Because you have a uh, really great exaggeration and um, like you talked about volume. Um, yeah. Is, um, I, I for one thing that for me and I I recommend this you know it's like artists should be exposed you know they should be all the time showing their work because you get feedbacks you know not just by people that are telling that are they are telling you what to do or how to do it you know also looking because the feedback is something that you get you know to rebuild, you know, to improve what you are doing. So a uh, few years I started like participating, you know, uh, with this uh, challenge of caricature. And Facebook, you, you have a lot of uh, uh, pages, you know, that, that they are like uh, asking for challenge, you know. One week is a challenge for Freddie Mercury. Another week is a challenge for Nelson Mandela. Um, it's really, really good because for that, for that specific challenge, we we'll see, you know, like almost a hundred caricatures of each person, of each artist, mm -hmm. and that is you learn from them because it's a perfect understand, you know, because okay, uh, one. And you know, okay, my character is good, but this blows my mind, and I can get an inspiration for it. You know? Yeah, yeah, I I agree with you on that. That's definitely been a huge push for me, and um, to develop talents and like experiment and really push a style, uh, and and hit it from a diff a bunch of different angles. Um, so, you know, like you said earlier, it's important to fall and get back up again, um, and like yeah. basically take risks, artistic risks. And those, uh, contests have been really good. And especially, um, the ISCA, the International Society of Caricature Artists every year has, uh, they started it a couple of years ago and you it's a caricature resolution they call it so like in the beginning january 1st of the year for one month you do a, a caricature every day so oh, okay that's that's a big one too and um 
is that why you are doing some of the same subjects over and over? Because I noticed uh, on your page, like, I think you have two jokers and you have like some of the same yeah. subjects repeating. Are you just experimenting with different ways of seeing them or, or what's up with that? Yeah, for me, uh, I need to see my own process. For instance, a few years ago, I made the Joker, you know. Um, a few days ago, I did it again. Um, when I do a caricature, I never see a reference. I never see, you know, my old style. Because I need to surprise myself, you know, how I get that distortion and how I get you know, the, the likeness. Mm -hmm. So when I do, for instance, I have a few commissions sometimes. Um, I ask, you know, please send me different angles mm -hmm. because not like I take one picture and I copy that picture. I am creating the character from different angles, you know, mm -hmm. understanding, you know, the, the regular expression because everyone has a regular expression. You know, it's something that defines us. Mm -hmm. And you can get from different pictures. And I creating a character, you know, a caricature, understanding, okay, the nose is uh, this big, you know, but also the nose, the nose helps him to be so expressive. Mm -hmm. and so I do a good nose and it's something like it's heavy. The, the guy is trying to, <laughs> to pull it. Yeah, and yeah. So I, I, I create in my head like a full story, you know? Yeah. This is yeah. really good advice. I just want to repeat what you just said because I think that, you know, we do uh, critiques on the interview. And um, so I want to I want to give advice to, to artists who are looking to caricature or, or even portrait. I, I think this is important in that, too. But it is uh, to, to take different photo references from different angles uh, in different situ lighting situations because um, I see a lot of people that just take one reference. And sometimes that's what you have to do. You have to take – that's all the only photo that you have. But if it is possible using multiple references and, like, making your own form, like making your own – you know, capturing that look that's consistent, like you said, and, and making like something new and something unique because, you know, with, with caricatures, um, I actually on the street, I charge more for photos because you you know, you're removing the, the third dimension and you're removing the fourth dimension of time, which is where the personality lives. So it's less fun and, and it's actually a lot more challenging and it takes, it takes me so much longer to draw from a photo than it does from a person in front of me. Um, so. No, yeah, I understand. Yeah. Another thing that like I can, like I, I can say, you know, or like advice is like understand muscle because muscles define expressions because all or line expressions are, are from how we move our muscle, you know, because understand expression means understand the life of that person is taking. Because for example, if we are like a really mean person, you know, we are going to be, we are going to, to express this part mostly the time. You know, we are creating one specific expression in our mouth and it's going to create like a, a strong line. Yeah, yeah. You know, is, you know, it's something that is like a pattern, you know, mm -hmm. that is repeated, you know, for everyone. But the good thing is that that the same pattern gets a personality for each specific person. You know, so you won't find a person that has three eyes because if has three eyes, you know, will have a different kind of muscle. That is impossible. So understanding muscles and bones structure, you know, is something that will make you better to under, understand expression. That's a For good me. point. That's that's a really good point. That it's more it's more than just the structure of the muscle it's like the lines that the muscles have created from that same expression over the years and certain yeah. muscles get 
bigger in the face if they're used more. So if, you know, if someone furrows their brow a lot, you know, they might have more kind of meat up here. That's interesting. Yeah. That's an interesting take. I never thought of it like that, but yeah, I, can, I agree with you. Yeah. So um, let's look at some artwork. Okay. The Lars. So Lars Eric Robinson is a supporter of the podcast and artist, live caricature artist, and uh, he's working on his digital game. And he just did one of the Dalai Lama. Do you see that one? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'll let you go first. Is there any uh, anything that stands out to you? Okay. Uh, like I mentioned, you know, before, for me, uh, it's really important, you know, to to create when you are like doing painting, you know, because it, this is a painting, right? Digital also painting. Yeah. Yeah, although it's a caricature, but you have a here, you have here different skills that all of them should be really defined, you know, because if you are doing something that is a painting, should work like a painting, you know, because inside should have, you know, all the fundament that is important to recognize like a painting. Okay, mm -hmm. one is the light, another is the shadows, the volume, the texture. With them, you create the atmosphere, you know. With that, you create the, this huge structure that is going to tell you that this is like light. Sorry. You know, like a like a, a skull. A sculpting, like a sculpture of light. For me, painting is like a sculpting. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I can say that you know the 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 tones are great, but the lights are not yet. Mm -hmm. You know, it's necessary to understand what is the the right direction of light because I can see that in the head, the light is from the right side. But when you see the arm, the light is from the left side. Mm. And that is that creates like a, a confusion to understand, you know, how it works. If you don't get that rightly, um, you won't have like the, the the right volume to understand, you know, what is close, what is far, you know. Because yeah. right now I can see also that uh, the the same you know uh, contrast the contrast is the same in the neck and yeah. the hands you know and the yeah. face and that is not creating like diff you know that is important to create yeah. diff yeah 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 exactly mm -hmm. you know um yeah. that is one. You know, uh, the next thing is the likeness, you know. Okay, people can say, okay, but this is a caricature and you have freedom to do it like you want. Sure. Uh, but, uh, for example, when, for, from my experiences, when you do a caricature, everything should be like a distort. You know, everything should have a distortion because everything is telling about this person. For example, if this person is like wearing like a red thing on him, you know, that should be like, uh, that That cloth should tell us that that red specific is from Dalai Lama. Mm -hmm. Because that, that, that cloth is telling me that, okay, this is the Dalai Lama. Because you are creating something and someone that has personality. And if I say that, you know, I can see that the ears are like, okay, huge and okay, it's the one step, you know, to a star like a caricature because it's something that is not right regularly, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but if you see the, the proportion between eyes, nose and mouth, it's like a, something regular. 
is something that you can you will find in, in a regular portrait. Mm -hmm. You know, and another thing to create a caricature is like you create an exa exaggeration, not just exa uh, not just this, uh, creating a distortion from the futures, also from the expression. You create a distortion of the expression. Or an exaggeration of the expression, yeah. Exactly, you know. I have to agree with um, you uh, totally on the tonal value and the lighting direction. But the thing that jumps out to me the quickest is first, first for me is the likeness. The likeness is missing. Um, and then yeah. sec secondly, um, like this area down by his elbow and his arm, um, there there is no that's totally flat. There's no there's no darkness. There's no shadow in that area um, that that yeah. tells tells you that the arm is separate. Same thing is happening with the hands up to the face. If you look at that area, there's no uh, tonal difference really. Um, yeah. And Lars is actually really good. He gets likeness most of the time. So this one, I think, is just a, a fluke for him. Um, but I like what you said about the lighting because it is, you know, there's there's kind of a, a moment there when you're doing a painting where you can get right, you can get really close with the likeness, but if you don't get it right, the mind automatically understands that it's not right. Like it, and it understands it on an unconscious level, and it just understands it intuitively that it's that it's a painting and it's not real. So it's kind of not believable. Um, you know, I have, I, I have a theory. You know, maybe it's a kind of weird theory, but for example, when we are like kids, when we are like really young, we know how to speak. We know how to create like a full sentence. Mm -hmm. You know, we can understand grammar like in, in a sophisticated way, you know? Mm -hmm. And when we see, we are growing, you know, we see everything by light. Um, we understand light. Our brain under, understand light. Our mm -hmm. brain understand distance, understand what is dark, what is lighter, you know? What is something that is shiny? We are understand what is something that is gray, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and different values, different tones, you know. And it's like potentially we could be an artist. Mm -hmm. We already have all the knowledge mm -hmm. that are so necessary, you know, to be an artist. The point is how to create that connection between what our brain understands and what our conscious understands. Hmm. You know, yeah. how we can educate, you know, we can educate us to create that bridge to put, to, to, to make it, you mm -hmm. know. Already we, we know, like you said, you know, we can see that something is not right. Also, for me, and another thing that I, I will say that it's really important, you know, for young artists, from people, for people that are learning, you know, to verbalize, to, to say it, to talk mm, about yes, it. Yes, yes, exactly. Actually, it's funny that you say that because there was uh, there was some show that I watched where they were talking about that the, the name for the color blue did not exist uh, at, at the certain time in human history. Um, I don't know when the, the, the word blue was invented, but it, it actually wasn't that long ago, maybe like two or 300 years ago. But before that, they never called it they never called anything blue. They just called it by like whatever, uh, like they called water white and they called, you know, depending on what color the water was reflecting, you know? Yeah. So it is interesting how language can make something like more conscious for us. Yeah, 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 yeah. Also, you know, uh, something that also I mentioned is that People should be in community all the time, talking all the time, like sharing, you know, uh, their own art, you know, listening feedbacks because it's really important. Also, seeing what other artists are doing, how they are doing, you know, what are the process of they are taking, you know, to 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 improve themselves, mm -hmm. you know. 
um, because that is important. Artist is a is this particular uh, person, you know, that all the time is learning. You know, there is not a day that you are not learning. Right. So uh, every day, being new. I want to say uh, one thing about one last thing about Lars, and then we can move on to the next one. But um, this is just a general piece of advice for any artist and something that I've found true in my own work. Um, it might help him to spend a little bit more time on sketching out the structure. And what I found is when I do, um, when I, when I make the lighting and the volume, at least uh, give myself clues about the volume and uh, especially about the lighting um, with, with the sketch before I get into the rendering or get into the painting, um, my painting process goes much faster. Uh, and it's actually a lot more enjoyable and fun because the work has already been done. All I really have to do is add the, the different hues and the, the tones because the heavy lifting is already finished. I've, I've worked all of that out in the sketch. And I, I'm not exactly sure of Lars's process here, um, but he's definitely, uh, to me, it kind of looks like he's jumping a little too quickly into the rendering and he's not thinking, not giving it the, the sketch enough time. And it may, maybe that's what's happening. I'm not sure. That's kind of what it looks like to me. You know, the yeah, like, I, I was watching his other work, you know, and he's really good. I can yeah. see that his work is really, really impressive. I like that. Yeah. I, I really like that. Um, but I, I don't know. Maybe it's an old painting. I, I don't know. Um, yeah, probably it's something that is quick, you know, was uh, a quick painting. I, I, I don't know. I, for me, you know, I should be really careful when I am like talking about uh, another work, you know, another artwork, because that is something also that I, I use in my life, you know. I, I prefer to say that I am going to give feedbacks and no criticism. Yeah. You know? Because, uh, you know, I, I don't know the motivation of that person. I don't know the time of learning. I don't know um, the reference. I don't know the tools that that person used, you know? Yeah, yeah. I don't know a lot, I don't know a lot of things. So for me, you know, my way of like, having contact with another artist is like uh, from respect yeah you know that's good um yeah uh, also because i i i was a person that i was learning so mm -hmm. i yeah. can like jam and say okay you should do this because with this you are going to have more results okay no that that is that is not working because yeah. each person each, each artist has a his own time, you know, and that yeah. is something that uh, we should wait. You know, also we are living in, in a time that everything is fast and also mm -hmm. it's really fun to say something that could be inappropriate. So, mm -hmm. yeah, um, I, you know, I can mention something like a feedback, not like a full and, and dramatic sentence, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I like to start with questions, you know, and, um, where where the person where the person wants to improve and I, I also try to start with uh, things that I like the thing that I like about Lar uh, Lars's work recently is this new kind of way that he's handling line work and color it's interesting for the eye um, but why don't we look at um, Darren Kennedy I, I uh, really like it. This stuff at the top is just uh, he he was doing it's a roast me thing so like people put a picture of themselves up and then people make caricatures or and they they roast them like yeah i think this guy you know he has like a really strong eye to catch you know the elements that are expressing for instance he takes the eyes and he make it bigger um the nose i really like his caricature he actually had a kind of a question um, about line work, 
And he said, oh, I want to move away from moving lines. Just maybe thoughts on being less line heavy, I guess. So I think like in this piece with the with the guy with, with the bright eyes, the older guy with the hat on, um, that one, there's such a strange feeling in that one because it's like line work and cartoon. And then when he renders it, it looks like almost photorealistic, like the light in the nose and the... Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so that's like these two completely different worlds like in one painting, which is just weird for me. But um, I think that what he wants to move away from is like that those real heavy lines. So I guess he's asking for any tips or advice on how to do that. What, uh, what should I say? I like the caricature. Okay. For me... It it's not necessarily the, the, the strong line because already with the tones he he made it you know yeah uh, it's just like create those uh, strong lines with uh, with color and that lines will become like a contrast mm -hmm. and already it has it has the volume and the expression mm -hmm. And um, also, I can see his brushes, and his brushes, his brushes are fine, are perfect. For me, are perfect. You know the way of how he's creating the volume, because you don't need too much, uh, too much volume. You know when you have the the right lines to create expression, because mm -hmm. also it can become like a your style. You know, because yeah. for me, the style should be something that. You will use to get what you need. Also, it's a tool to feel uh, happy, and you can go forward. You know, with that. You know? Mm -hmm. I uh, the only thing that I can say about about that and what I do to not use heavy lines is I just try to build the the volume with tonal changes. Um, and and building it up with with paint even if it's digital like you can build it up with like cross hatching or you can use tonal variations with different brushes or whatever um and i i think the only advice that i could give on that if he wants to move away from using those lines personally the way i do it is um i don't start with the line i start with a line sketch sometimes but then i go in with that use that sketch as kind of a guide and then I build up the volume with with tonal variations, um, yeah. and not but, not, but, not thinking in terms of lines, but thinking in terms of planes, like plane changes yeah. and the way the light hits the plane. Yeah. For example, I can see that he has more skills in lines than in color. You know, mm -hmm. uh, um, I think it's like like you you said. You know, it's something. Like it's kind of weird because you can see like the lines are strong and are like hard lines, but with the line is creating, you know, already the expression. So for me, he has options. One of them is like he can use like uh, perfectly flat color, mm -hmm. you know, with some tones and it works perfect. Or another thing is like to change the lines to contrast and the in, in, in the place that he's put in the line you know but that is something kind of is the next step for his painting because here i can see that he is learning how to paint also how to create a caricature that mm -hmm. are two things totally different yeah you know he can um, also there's something uh, yeah, he, yeah, go ahead. He, he can also if if he wants to kind of hack it or, or or try to like find a way around it, if he's if he finds himself having a hard time getting rid of the line work, another direction he can go with it is just don't use pure black. Yeah, you know, use yeah. a deep blue or use a deep red. Oh, oh, you can you can paint the the line. You know, if, if he is working, I don't know in what program, probably in Photoshop. You know, he can make the line in another layer he can lock the line and he can color in the line uh, yeah, you know, yeah. for example the line around the nose could be red 
you know, around the face could be like a brown, you know, mm -hmm. around ears like red brown, you know, yeah. something like that. And with that, he's going to have like, a, you know, more, uh, his work is going to be more connect, you know, it's, it's going to be like one thing. Now it's like two things that you are seeing, you know, like a natural color, like because it's like a realistic color. And another thing is the line. The lines are like, of course, it's like a cartoon, you know, a car mm -hmm. caricature, cartoon, caricature. So that that could be my advice, you know. So I what think are we? I, he has like a lot of potential. Okay, so why don't we look at chance? Hi, uh, Lou Royas. This is a uh, Chance McGee. I'm um, kind of in awe looking at your artwork right now. And uh, when I heard about you doing the interview with uh, Sam King Davis, um, I just started looking at your work and it's quite amazing. I'm, I'm surprised I hadn't heard of you before. You're definitely one of my favorites as of right now, basically. Um, but I guess my, my question is, looking at your work, I'm seeing a lot of... Um, really soft soft lighting in your work and um you have there's there's two caricatures that stand out it's the one you did of uh Hannibal and uh the one you did of uh Joaquin Phoenix as the Joker um and I just love the lighting that you have in these paintings and how soft everything looks my question is um is that softness something that you start out with, as in you just use soft brushes? Or are you starting off very painterly and kind of blending as you work? Or is blending something you do at the very end? Um, I struggle with this a lot in a lot of my work. I feel like I, um, I'm i sort of trying to balance between soft and hard edges. And um, I don't quite think that I'm able to get the same kind of fog okay, that you create in your work this kind of fog lighting candle light okay, the mona lisa lighting so my question one, one is second. what um what tips would you have uh particularly for digital art um and um any advice you you have in general from our artwork i'm i'm grateful to hear for from so um thanks in advance and uh yeah love your artwork so go ahead did you have an answer for him yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, okay, I, I I will say that he is really really nice guy, you know. Uh, yeah. His work is really really good, you know. I try um, to tell him that all the time. <laughs> uh, I I think for the style that he is like already he has a style, you know. He is asking me, you know, how to blend my color, you know. If I have advice for digital digital painting, you know, um, I, I my head was like, hey, I can learn from you. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I really like, you know, that is something really good, you know, you, uh, that all all the time we can recognize, you know, good artists, and we can learn each other, you know, we can yeah. learn from different, you know, expression. Um well I I, I I won't say anything about how to create a caricature because already he has the knowledge. Mm -hmm. You know. So I can see that uh, his lines are like totally expressive, you know, and that is amazing. I really love it. Um well uh, okay, my advice for digital artists when I am painting, you know. I always I start for the middle tones. I never start for from the shadows or from the light. I start from the middle tones. Because the middle tone is something that you will sculpt, you know, because mm -hmm. of course you should you should recognize the light direction. And it's kind of difficult, well. Uh, I will say for me because I don't use just a simple word, a simple color. I use, I try to understand all the time 
my my element like it's in the middle of something that is surrounded by different light. You know, one yeah. mean light, another light that will give me the back light, another light that is going to give me like atmosphere light. Uh -huh. You know? Yeah. And another thing that things that are like around the face. For instance, if I am wearing like a yellow jacket, that yellow jacket is going to reflect yellow lights on my face. Uh -huh. You know, if I had like a, 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 a sunrise light, my light is going to be like pink. If I have like a back, uh, a back light that is blue, the back light in the face is going to be blue, you know, kind mm -hmm. of blue at blue. When I am painting, you know, I start understanding what is my 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 space, you know, mm -hmm. my the space of that is going to be for my character, you know, mm -hmm. for my caricature, for my character design. That's good you know, advice for Chance, especially because a lot of his uh, work is just the white background and it's focused yeah. totally on the character or the caricature. Yeah. yeah. So you're, you're go on, you're saying you, you think about the space and the way that the light is working in the space, not just on the caricature. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. um, after that, you know, when I understand what lights, what lights I have, you know, I start with the main color of this character. For example, if I am like painting one like um, one person that his skin is like more red, you know. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I I I add the the the, the main color, you know, the the principal color, the mm -hmm. red, and all areas that are going to be the shadows. You know, and for me, the next is going to add not the shadows, it's going to be the add the lights. And one thing that I didn't mention is that I never make a caricature from white canvas. I never use white. I always use gray mm -hmm. because gray already is giving me, you know, a, a tone. Yeah. You know. I, I try to use the knowledge from my experience from oil painting, you know, because white is something that is distracting you. I don't use white because light, uh, the, the white color or well, the, the, the white, you know, the white tone is going to be specific in one and in, in really tiny parts of your painting. Yeah. If you start with, white, you know, it's like, is something that is also affecting your influence in your eye. Mm -hmm. So I prefer to be gray, you know, understanding the light and understand, you know, the middle tones. And with that, I can start like adding, you know, detail. Mm -hmm. I, I will keep mention this, you know, for me, painting is like a sculpting, like a, you, you take a, um, a mood, you know, and mm -hmm. you start like, creating the form the color is like that for me you know and mm -hmm. when i use photoshop to paint um i use opacity a lot you know okay uh, yeah because for instance if i want that uh, one color for instance i have my backlight that is blue if the the main color you know the principal color is like red you know if my opacity isn't a hundred percent I am I am going to have like a that's, that this strong a border between color, you know, between color. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. But if I low my opacity, you know, for instance, I I I put it in twenty percent, you know, I will already I am going to create that mix because yeah. I am going to add twenty percent of red over on the yellow that is a hundred percent so that is going to create like a, a subtraction are so you it, 
Are you um, very like specific or scientific in the way that you use your layers, or is it more intuitive? No, no, no. This is scientific. I, okay. I try to all the time like thinking like as something that I can I can share, something that I can teach. You no, can it's, pass uh, on. I, I see. Yeah. Yeah. It's not something that for ex it's like how you became an artist. You know, for me, an artist is not someone that use his intuition all the time. It's someone that has already the intuition, but is using his time or the time to improve with learning, with practicing, with experiencing, mm -hmm. you know, and for painting is necessary also, you know, to have like a system for me. Uh, for me, it's like uh, people can't learn how to paint. You know, it's like you said, understanding your tool, you know, understanding what you get in your hand, how how to understand, you know, the settings or the settings in Photoshop. That mm -hmm. is really important because with that you are going to to create like a brush that is soft. For example, a lot of people ask me, hey, can you share your brushes? Oh, how should I paint this? You know, I, I said, okay, I can sh I can share my brushes, but if you have a different setting in your program, you won't have my result. Yeah, you know? it's so funny. That's that's the joke, isn't it? It's like that. That's a common joke that I, a lot of artists say. Is like, hey, can you send me those brushes? Like, as if the brush is gonna like make you a better painter. It's like. You know, yeah. it's just not going to happen. Yeah. Um, I want to exactly. say something. I want to add something because Chance uh, participates and he's a he's a good friend and a Patreon and just a just an awesome artist. I, we work together sometimes um, on live digital stuff, and it's just intoxicating to watch him uh, make those lines the way he does that. And and I think the point that I want to make with Chance is a perfect example is that like. He's got this line work, he's got the value, he's got the right colors, he's got the right expression, he's got good composition. It's almost like everything's already working for him in this particular style, and it's it's immediately, um, immediately the person's personality, and uh, s secondly, there's a lot of uh, really expressive line work. Um, so I think that you know, with his approach, he's made those lines so many thousands of times that it's so ingrained that he's able to make these paintings. I think the only way, for me anyway, to break completely out of the style is to start com start in a completely different way or use completely different tools or restrict myself from doing... Uh, any of the first, you know, let's say three steps in the process. And that kind of forces me um, to approach it from a different angle. That's the only way that I'm able to really experiment because his stuff is very line centric. And then he goes in and, and colors it in later. So maybe he needs to start with the color, you know, start with the tone, start with the color, and then only add the lines later more sparingly if he really wants to get more of the effect that you're getting getting like a paint painterly approach does that make sense yeah yeah of course of course you know um i i can see that he he's a strong structure as the lines you know mm -hmm. the color is like something that is uh is part of the structure part of the the likeness that he gets when he is drawing you know mm -hmm. but for example for me my caricature is like i get here the color, you know, the the mass of color, the volume, you know, and after that, I I start adding the the likeness, mm -hmm. uh, like you know, he he maybe can start, you know, from a different way. Uh, mm -hmm. It's going to it is going to have a new experience, you know. It's something that is going to give him, you know, more uh, more sense of volume. Or also of atmosphere, you know. Uh, one thing that I recommend is like uh, artists should learn uh, 
uh, digital uh, 3D sculpting. Mm. That is really, really important because with that, you can understand, you know, the 3D sensation uh, better, you know, because with that, also you can include the perspective that is so important when you do a caricature, when you do a character design, because you can understand how the nose could work if the nose is in different position. Mm -hmm. So it's like all this knowledge are like connected. You know? Yeah. So why don't we have a look at uh, Tan's work? Okay, um, uh, I can see that he is uh, he's learning, you know. Um, uh, the the understanding of color, you know, is like it's a process, you know. Um, also, you know, when you understand color, if you understand contrast, you will understand like perspective, but perspective, not like in a line way, also perspective, like a difference between space by tones. Mm -hmm. you know? uh, for instance, in the first place, you know, the first area that is close to the camera, to your eye, the contrast will be like a strong. Mm -hmm. And it's going to uh, it's going to to lose that contrast, you know, when you are getting further. Right. So in each area, the sense of color is going to change too, because each area has its own atmosphere. Mm -hmm. For instance, if in this area you have like a light that is really, really bright, you know, you will have your shadow that is going to be bright. Too. That is going to create like a strong contrast. Mm -hmm. Also, the colors are going to be more saturated. Mm -hmm. For so me, for example. Should, can yeah. we use one of the images as like, maybe we can talk, use the mermaid as an example of what you're talking about? Yeah. yeah. I was uh, talking, uh, well, I was watching the goblin. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because the goblin is more like, uh, has more variations. The mermaid is just one element in front of a rock. Mm -hmm. So I can see much about it. But I, I can add uh, later a few advice, you know. Okay, I, I can go ahead with the goblin. Uh, for example, for me, uh, when I am painting shadows, always shadows has color. It's not like an absence of color. Shadows uh -huh. has color, you know. You, you, well, uh, you can see that shadows also has light. For me, you know, when I am painting, I add light, I, I add color in my shadow. Mm -hmm. It's like, I use like 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 the old old painter old painting technique, you know, that uh, painter from two centuries ago. They were they were painting the shadows, you know, actually using color, uh -huh. and the, the the contrast that they get was uh, really interesting because they were like using complementary colors, you know. Also, you know, they were they were creating like a a right contrast between light and shadow in the same proportion you know for, uh, it's like for example for me it's like in the middle you have the zero you know up you have the light and down you have the shadow you know if you put the, the zero is the, the strong the strong light and the strong darkness if you put for example one that is light the strong light should be one, the strong darkness that is going to create the control. Mm -hmm. If you nine, that is the light, you know, nine is the distance that is far from the zero, that is the strong light, you will have the nine shadow. 
and that is going to be far. And with that, you are going to create, you know, distance. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, you are like uh, creating, you know, that desaturation with color. You know, mm -hmm. um, like you said, you know, like painting is, is something that is kind of sophisticated, you know, and scientific to, you know. Mm -hmm. All the time I am doing that exercise, you know, all the time I am doing that practice. You know, it's not like, okay, I, I want to put like a jello in the shallow. Okay, you can, you know, it's impossible, you can. You know, it's, it's, uh, I, I remember one expression of uh, Picasso. Picasso, he said, you know, that doesn't exist like a wrong color, just the wrong place. Hmm, yeah. You know, uh, and yeah. I think that's a good tip. That's a good uh, a good observation of that. Um, so we actually have one last question, and this comes from Jason Seiler. Do you know Jason Seiler? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The caricature, the American car caricaturist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he sent in a question. I'm going to play it. Oh, really? He asked me a question. Yeah, yeah. I am, I am excited. OK. Hello, this is Jason Seiler. I've got a question for Luis Rojas. Actually, I've got three questions. Um, and I'm just wondering if you can help me out with this. First question is, what has many keys but cannot open a single lock? What has many keys but cannot open a single lock? And uh, my second question is, what runs all around a backyard yet never moves? And my third question is, what tastes better than it smells? <laughs> Thank you. Have a nice day. <laughs> So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I understand the question. You don't understand the question. <laughs> the first one is what what has many what has many keys but uh, doesn't unlock any doors. Uh, it's a tricky question. <laughs> I think it's a piano, right? Is that the right answer? I'd say a piano. But the question is for you, so. <laughs> so that, that, that's the first question. And then his second question was, what runs around the backyard and doesn't move? Is that right? I have no idea. <laughs> oh, what tastes better than it smells? <laughs> There's a lot of things that taste better than they smell, actually. I think that yeah. I think that egg rolls, like fried egg rolls, taste a lot better than they smell. <laughs> I think he was just. I think Jason was just uh, bombing bombing my podcast because uh, I, I bombed his podcast once. So. <laughs> so yeah. It's been great talking to you. It's been great talking shop and talking technique and getting to know you a little bit better. And um, is there anything that you want to plug? Like, is there anything that you're promoting right now? Or um, well, I no, no, actually no. I am like every day, like doing my 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 learning. From for me, you know. Each caricature is a new opportunity to learn. You know, I am a person that I am apprentice to. You know, mm -hmm. um, I I I am learning from John artists. You know, I love the guy of you sent me change Chen. Chen, I love his. Yeah. Yeah, he's amazing. You know, say hello. I hope uh, <laughs> he will see the interview. You know. Yeah, yeah, he'll uh, see it. Yeah. He's amazing, you know. Um, I, you know, I am really happy, you know, uh, about the Jason Seller. You know, I learned from him. I, yeah. I love him. You know, yeah. I didn't mention him. 
because I didn't remember. You know, I had so many artists. Yeah, he, he's know. all right. You know, he's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do that. You know, um, but, uh, you know, I, I think another thing is that always it's important, you know, to have like a, the humble attitude in your life when you are an artist. Because humble, that humility, yeah, you mean? yeah, 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 because that is going to protect you, you know, from the ego outside yeah. that can like whisper in your ears and can put you far, you know, of learning. Yeah, you know, art artist is like a, a clean child that needs to play, needs to enjoy you know, needs to have like a really, really good experience of learning, also of sharing, like a child does, mm -hmm. you know, a child uh, play with, with his friends, with, with friends around and is sharing, is learning, you know, is falling, is like uh, standing up, you know, it's, uh, for me, that is my, you know, it's, it's, it's an advice, uh, life advice, you know, Yeah. that it's really, really important. Yeah, I agree. So, uh, can people buy prints from your art station? Do you have those available for sale? I don't think so. No yet. Okay. No, I, I, I should do it. You know. Well, people can they can send me a, a message from. Uh, I would like. Inbox. I would like a print of yours. That's really good. I collect art that I look up to and I put it in my studio and I like look at it for inspiration and try to take what I can from it. So yeah, uh, I would, I would love one of your pieces. Definitely. Let me show you something. Hold on. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a caricature. <laughs> it's yeah, a yeah. Line Freud? yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Who, who did that? Is that yours? Yeah. It's mine. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. 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 You That's know, funny. I, yeah, yeah, I made it with uh, pencil and pen. You know, well, uh, yeah, people can write me if you want. I can send you the file. You know. Oh, yeah. Cool. Perfect. Hey, it was yeah. great, great meeting you, Lewis, and um, I hope we can talk soon. And it would be awesome to see you at ISCA or Eurocature. So, if um, do you travel? Do you ever get out of Peru? Uh, I wish I I would like to do it. Well, I think after this pandemic, you know, but yeah. right now my country is closed. Yeah. It's impossible to be out. Well, once but the yeah. once the corona is uh, is falling back, then it would be cool to see you at a conference, and uh, you would do really well at at ISCA and Eurocature. You would, I'm sure, that you would take home some prize for sure. Um, because you know, your, your skills are very solid. So I, I just can't believe that I'd never, I've been a caricature artist, totally caricatures for like almost seven years. And this is the first time I'm hearing about you. I can't believe that because your skill level is, you know, you're in the upper echelon. So usually, you know, we, we know about, about people like you, <laughs> maybe other people in the, in the convention know you more. I don't know, but chance didn't know about you and other people didn't know about you. So I'm surprised that we're just now finding out. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Um, I, I think, uh, there's something that you grow every day, you know, it's like right now, uh, I am moving myself, you know, in media, uh, a little more, you know, uh, I try to do more work every day, you know, every day I try to post one caricature. I have my my schedule for every day, you know, because this is something that, uh, that is something that I, I when I am going to be a, a person that is going to be passed, you know, uh, I don't want to, to say it like in a dramatic way. This is the, the thing that I, I want to do all my life, you know. The last thing that I'm going to do when I am going to be a, a, a dead person is like creating a caricature. Oh, uh, that's, life. wow, that's a strong statement. <laughs> I'm going to quote you on that. <laughs> yeah, 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 perfect. Well, yeah, because then then what are you waiting for? Let's, you should join. 
It'd be great to have you as a part of the caricature community at ISCA, and it would be awesome to have you at Eurocature. ISCA is more established, but Eurocature is uh, on, only a convention and a Facebook group and a community. But uh, ISCA is like, you know, we have newsletters and magazines and, you know, other other stuff too. So, um, but I win. I win. Yeah. I win. I'll talk to the organizer of Eurocature. I, I wonder if he's heard of you also. You know, we, I think he's always looking for guest speakers as well. So. Great. Thank you. Okay, Louis. Uh, pleasure to meet you. you. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, are we going to do the, 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 the drawing or it's not time for, for it? Um, no, we don't usually do a drawing. Oh, okay, okay. oh dude, okay. that's a good. That's actually a good idea, though. What What did you have in mind? No, oh, I don't know. Uh, maybe for another interview, we can do a, a live streaming. You know, and I I will be okay with that. Okay, great. That's that's awesome, man. I'd love to do it again. I'd definitely love to have you on again. And um, yeah, I, I've actually been thinking about doing um, you know, like just a regular interview, kind of like we did just now. And then have like a follow-up thing um, with the person I interviewed where we do like a walkthrough of your process or we do yeah. some kind of teaching where we teach like a certain lighting technique or something like that would be interesting. Uh, at the moment, I'm working on the, the – there's a famous bridge here called Charles Bridge. It was built like, you know, 700 years ago. And um, that's where I work. So I'm working there, you know, 12 hours a day, 10, 12 hours a day while the season is high. That's my my yeah. main income. So I don't have much time for extra stuff, but um, that's that's a great idea. That would be really cool. I'll definitely keep you in mind. Yeah. Thank you, Sam. Right. Yeah, nice to meet you, Louis. And uh, yeah, have a good day and happy painting. You too. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Have a great Bye. day. Thank you. Thank you. You too. Bye bye. We work really hard to bring you entertaining and useful content. So if you enjoy what we're doing here on the channel, you can click the link in the description below to the Patreon page and donate ten, five, even two dollars a month is a big help and it shows your support. So thanks for watching and enjoy.